Hi everyone, it's me, Jeff Gott. And in this week's video, I'm going to teach you how to improve your hip flexors so you can walk upstairs with more control and confidence. Follow along with me as I demonstrate several exercises to strengthen your hip flexors in a very easy to follow way. By the end of this video, you will learn how to improve your current state so you can start where you are and end up where you wanna be. The only equipment that you're going to need is a chair, a resistance band or a towel if you have one, and the progress journal that you can easily download in the description box below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a like after the video if you enjoyed it. And please leave a comment below letting us know where you are watching from and what symptoms you are struggling with so we can cater to you in our future videos. With all that being said, let's improve those hip flexors. An exercise session for hip flexor strength. Gonna help you get up and down the stairs and bring that femur through in your gait. Super effective exercises that we're getting ready to execute. We're gonna go metabolic, hip flexion, armchair push-up, then we're gonna finish things off with an eccentric hip flexor set. Let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna start with the metabolic hip flexion. Now I'm gonna go left leg first. Notice I have my trusty progress journal. If you don't have your progress journal, pause the video, get it ready so that you can seamlessly go from exercise to record results back to the next exercise. Now you do not have to have, I just grabbed a dumbbell, you do not have to have a resistance here. If you haven't executed this exercise before, you shouldn't be using resistance. Let's let your body prove to you what it can do first, then we will increase the difficulty, okay? Now if you have weak hip flexors, which many of you probably do, don't hesitate to use a towel and or band to assist you to the best flexion that you can gain. You're gonna slowly, before we start the clock, when I say get to the starting position, start to give the weight of your leg back to your hip flexor until you feel your hip flexor fully engaged. Even if you're assisting a little bit with your hands and your hip flexor can't quite hold your leg up, that's the starting position, right? And then once you can no longer hold that leg in that position because the hip flexor is done, you have to relax the hip flexor, that's the time that you're going to notate in your head and you're just gonna continue with your best effort. Knowing that the goal of exercise is to challenge yourself, so don't beat yourself up. Let's do this. We're gonna go to the starting position. I'm bringing your left leg up. Now notice my dumbbell, if you are gonna add resistance, is at the end of the femur. Clock is on. Now, you're breathing freely, you're focused on keeping the leg elevated, we are isolating this hip flexor, right? Um, now, the hip flexor is that top of that hip, and it is what allows the femur to be lifted when you're going upstairs, when you're walking to bring your leg through in any type of gait motion. And again, we're exercising today, so you should be challenging yourself to the highest level possible. Intensity, right, high enough intensity is what's going to prompt results in the air. We have to communicate very clearly to this tissue that it's not efficient, that we need it to adapt, okay? And the way that we do that is through challenging it. So when you can no longer, with continuous and uninterrupted loading, keep this position, that's the time that you're going to notate. So we can measure it, right? You're gonna notate it, remember in your head, and after the set, we're going to record it together in the progress journal. You're breathing freely, Understanding and reminding yourself why you're doing this, right? Before the results, not because it feels good, not because it's necessarily fun, but because we know it's going to improve our lifestyle, it's going to improve our function, and it's gonna make us much more injury resistant. All right, we're in the exhaust range, that final 30 seconds, and if and when you can no longer continue, that is the successful, and I am getting close, I am there, right? About the 120 mark, Breathing freely, I'm gonna notate it in my mind, right back in with my best effort. Breathing freely, calming that mind for three, two, and one. Success, Woo! at the 120 mark. So, let's go ahead, grab our progress journal for the hip flexion metabolic, 10 pounds, 120. I'm gonna write down, I'm gonna write okay. If you were able to complete the entirety of the set, you need to write 130 and write a plus, circle it down, because you want to indicate to yourself that the next time you execute that set, you need to increase the difficulty to continue to add a progressive overload to the area. Let's go ahead and jump into our armchair push-up now. Now, I'm using a silver band. Again, if you have not executed this exercise before, please just do it with your body weight allow yourself to prove to you what you can currently do, and then you increase the difficulty as needed. The armchair push-up is referred to as the squat of the upper body by many individuals. 
So this is going to incorporate now triceps, which is the back of your arms, deltoids, your shoulders, and your pectoralis major minor, a little bit of your torso as well too. Form here, you're gonna place the heel of your hand on the side of the chairs. If you have arms to your chair, even better, because then you can extend, get a little bit higher, and your hips are off the seat. We're gonna go to that starting position, actively engaging, make sure you drop shoulders down, okay? I've got resistance band on. Hips are gonna come slightly forward, and you're gonna get a slight bend in the elbows to actively engage the muscles. Ready to do this? Let's do it. Clock is on. Slight bend, clock is rolling. Now the entire time you're thinking about adducting your hands, meaning you're trying to squeeze and squish the seat towards the middle. Like if there was a line directly down the middle of your body, you're trying to squeeze the seat towards that midline, okay? What that does when you're adducting those arms, the humerus, the, 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 the arms, that is allowing your pectoralis major minor, your chest and your shoulders to contract and engage at a higher level. And that's what exercise is really all about. It's about engagement of the muscle tissue. And the goal here is muscle failure. You wanna be extremely measured. Do you have to go to failure to see results in exercise? No, but you gotta go close. So why not err on the safe side? Be measured so that you can ensure that you're getting the results that you want, okay? Keeping a slight bend in the elbows, shoulders are dropped, heart rate's gonna jump, breathing through it, and when you can no longer continue with continuous and uninterrupted loading, engagement of the muscle, right, you have to relax, that's the time that you're gonna notate. Then just jump in, continue to give your best effort for the remainder of the 90 seconds, right? Knowing you successfully did it, you've progressively overloaded your body, and you're gonna see the results as long as you focus on the recovery process, right, before you reapply. We are there. This exhaust range, your final 30 seconds, and that's where you should, if this is an appropriate difficulty to continue to give you the best results, find muscle failure, okay? No more than about 10 seconds. I'm close, but I'm rolling here. I feel like I am gonna complete it, but I'm just gonna let it play out, give my best effort. Two more seconds, one more second, and completed. I completed that set, meaning I didn't reach muscle failure. I was able to complete the entire 130 of time under tension. So I'm gonna write 130, and I'm gonna write a plus, because as I mentioned on that hip flexor exercise, if you complete the exercise, it means you have earned the ability to increase the difficulty. And you're exercising because you want results. This is not movement, right? This is not for recovery modality and or maintenance and or recreation. We are exercising. So you must create a progressive overload on a regular basis in order to continue to see the results that you are looking for. Speaking of results, let's keep it rolling with the hip flexor. We're gonna finish up this exercise session for hip flexors with an eccentric, eccentric, which is the lengthening of the tissue, a stronger contraction of that metabolic hip flexion, okay? So I am going to increase the resistance a little bit because I'm stronger, we're all stronger in the eccentric range of motion. And what this is going to encompass is a static hold in the fully contracted position or as high as you can get for two seconds and lowering for 10 seconds or slower at the bottom. You will relax, we're gonna disengage because we want these to be maximum efforts. Then we're gonna reset and we're looking for four, five to six efforts, which will take us 60 to 90 seconds. Now, failure is the goal, meaning when you can no longer continue to lower at 10 seconds or slower, notate the time because that's where we've lost the proficiency of the exercise, meaning the muscles have gotten the hint. Then you're going to just just finish the remainder of the exercise with your best effort, and then we'll know to the time at the end. Let's go ahead and wrap things up for the day and get this hip flexor eccentric set in. Following into the starting position, and again, if you're using the towel, the band, you just utilize that, okay, to give your best ability and challenge the muscle. Following into the starting position, stabilize hold for two, clock is on. One second, now we're gonna lower for 10 seconds or slower. As we come down, momentum is out. The slower you go, the more time under resistance and engagement you're gonna get out of the muscle tissue. At the bottom, we are gonna relax for two. One, reset, stabilize hold for two. One, now as slow as we can on the way down. Again, muscle failure will be the point where you cannot continue to lower at 10 seconds or slower. It's gonna be faster, it's gonna be seven seconds, eight seconds. You'll feel, you're gonna to start to lose the ability to go slowly. That's where you're gonna notate the time, okay? Right back up, and we're seeking that because that's going to ensure that we have progressively overloaded the muscle. That control, when you're going slow, you're forcing the muscle to do the exercise, right? Which allows the metabolic stimulus, you're gonna call the cardiovascular system into play as well. Now, we're executing this. 
slowly start to lower for increased function in your hip flexors. Remind yourself that because it is uncomfortable. Challenging your body is not a natural thing to do. For two, one, although it's a beneficial thing, right? Slowly lowering, we're going into that exhaust range, final 30 seconds no matter what, really exaggerating that pace, breathing freely, relaxing for two. One, I am slowly starting to lose that ability to go 10 seconds or slower, so I'm gonna notate that time, right? Right about that 117, 116 mark, perfectly fine, right? Which was the fifth effort, relaxing for two. Everyone, we have one more opportunity right here, whether you've successfully reached failure and you're not able to lower it 10 seconds or slower or not, and done. Whoo! Excellent effort. Excellent effort, everyone. Now, I'm gonna write down 117, right? I'm gonna write down okay, because I reached momentary ooh, muscle failure. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to circle back around, I want you to execute the same metabolic set and then eccentric set on this right side. Doing so is going to allow you to prompt progressive and real results in this hip flexor, which will then lead to improvement in going up and down stairs, injury resistance, walking in your gait, and much more endurance on a daily basis. And that's what you are here for. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. Again, as I mentioned, leave a comment in the box below. What, where are you from? What are you focused on? So that we can make sure we're tailoring these exercise videos to you so that we ensure that you continue to get the results that you want so you can start where you currently are and end up where you want to be and you can live the life that you want to live. This stuff works and we're super, super, super blessed to be able to share it with you. So until next time, focus on engaging, write down your results, and if you have any questions, we're here for you. If you want to get into a more structured and regimented program that can help you gain more control of your symptoms, then you should join our Take the Fight to the Muscles Workout Club. Now, by joining, you will receive access to an exclusive seated full body fundamentals workout class that updates every two weeks, stretch classes to help you alleviate tightness and spasticity, access to our two most popular focus on series for foot drop and hip flexors, plus bonus Q and A's with myself each month where I can answer your questions about exercise in MS. Click the join button below this video to learn more information about the Take the Fight to the Muscles Workout Club and to see which plan works best for you. I'll see you all next week.